s'appelle Mademoiselle de Paris Et sa vie c'est un petit peu la nôtre Son royaume c'est la rue de Rivoli We've just arrived in Paris. Oh, it feels like a really fascinating moment in history to be here. You know, this is a moment in time where the sort of the, the dark shadows of the oil age have really uh, are really coming home in terms of climate change and terrorism. And it feels like transition brings a piece of the puzzle that is really uh, that is usually missing. I guess for me it feels like the changes that we need are already here and they're already happening and they're growing and they're spreading and that's really what, what I feel like we're bringing here and, uh, and we're going to have some fun as well. I think it should be a really interesting few days. COP21 brings a process of uh, listening to uh, what civil society has to say and we are taking this advantage we are talking to the people, we are talking to our peer citizens, we are talking to the media. And, uh, and this is going to bring some results, much more than the official negotiations in the COP21. So we're here at the uh, Human Chain, which is the uh, replacement for the Climate March. This is also happening all around the world. There's people at this moment marching in cities all over the world, people who are concerned about the climate and want to send a message that it matters and that we need to do something about it. But there's a transition block here, and they've turned the 21 stories into a banner made up of each of the 21 stories, which is really lovely. So the government didn't want this to happen. They didn't want uh, people to see that the level of opposition to climate change is so strong that thousands of people are out on the streets of Paris, but it's happening anyway. Aujourd'hui, au niveau de la conférence 21, des, des accords favorables et des accords qui pourront changer le monde, qui nous permettront d'avoir un autre changement et de réduire tout ce qui est gaz et effet de serre. I'm here because you know, I really believe we're living at this absolutely incredibly powerful historic moment. I just want to be here as a witness, just standing here. It feels great to know what I'm standing for. Et je suis ici pour un climat, comme je dis, plus détendu. So, what am I expecting to happen? Uh, everything feels really up in the air at the moment. Uh, with the state of emergency, it's hard to know what is going to go ahead and what, what isn't. I think people are getting really creative with, with what's happening. I personally noticed that there was, you know, the stress from the being so shocked at the terrorist attacks. And I found myself in the middle of what had just happened, which is the near past, and what was going to happen, which was the climate talks. And since the climate, whenever you read about it, is kind of scary, I felt like I was caught in the middle of two really scary things. <laughs> it was so great to see everyone coming together, and it really made me start to feel why people come to Paris, why people come together and try to, you know, stand in a human chain with all these great messages and signs. It really brought it very much more alive for me and made me feel like part of something that's huge. I went yesterday to, to Le Bourget, to the conference centre where the main COP21 is happening and I went to an event that was like a, about um, cutting subsidies for fossil fuels, removing subsidies for fossil fuels. So they reckon that between 1980 and 2010, a third of carbon emissions were caused by the fact that fossil fuels were, were subsidised. And uh, the reason we tend to subsidise them is because the argument is it makes them more affordable to poorer people, but actually it doesn't at all. And if you, stop, cut, if you cut the subsidies and use the money in other ways, you can drive a much better economy. And the level of support for that was really remarkable. And there was a guy writing in the Telegraph this morning who said, regardless of what's decided in Paris over the next two weeks, fossil fuels are finished, the low carbon economy is here. Quand je suis vacciné contre les COP, 
parce que j'étais à Copenhague en 2009 pour la COP 15 ou 16, je ne sais plus. Et j'ai été très choqué par l'échec de cette conférence. J'avais cru, comme beaucoup de gens, de façon assez naïve, que, on allait, que les grands gouvernants allaient vraiment trouver un accord. Ils avaient beaucoup dit ça. Obama, Sarkozy, Merkel, disaient, oui, oui, on va trouver un accord. Et ils n'ont rien fait. Donc ça m'a beaucoup déçu et on a été... On parle d'un syndrome euh, dépressif post-Copenhague, souvent entre nous, parce que pendant plusieurs mois, on s'est dit, mais alors, euh, si cette conférence prétendue de la dernière chance n'a pas donné de résultat, donc il n'y a plus de chance, donc euh, on ne peut plus rien faire. What I'm really interested in is, is, is uh, about retelling the story um, and finding a new narrative, and there's a lot of talk about that, but what does that actually mean? I think the first, the first thing that um, we're telling a new narrative is that we actually don't know. I mean, there's, there's a huge push towards getting the right message across, but the fact is that actually we don't really know what, what the future is going to look like. We, 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 we can have an idea of what we like, but I, I, I think the fact is that, that we don't know is a really good place to start. And then I think one of the key points, really, with, with the message is that it's non-hostile. Because I think all you know, our, our media is incredibly hostile, and we, we live within a very hostile culture. So that's why I have a non-hostile, friendly, heart-based heart uh, way of speaking about each other is is, is absolutely fundamental. Naomi Klein, uh, a while ago, she she said that one of the things that she loved about transition and the inner transition thing, she said, if you collapse people's worldview, you have to stick around afterwards to help them pick up the pieces. So I sense that actually COP21 is just a moment, it's a snapshot, but underneath there is an inevitable flow in that direction. COP15, the climate movement was so burnt out and frazzled after that, so for me, what's decided at COP21 is what's decided at COP21, but there is an inevitable, coal is finished, oil and gas are on the way out, history is turning, and actually this is a really remarkable, as you said John, an extraordinary time to be alive, and actually what we see happening in, in communities, all of you can help create that picture, and it's exhilarating for me. Thank, Thank you. you. I really think, and that's what something that Rob said tonight, that the, it's on, you know, the current is really strong, and there's nothing that can really stop it. Although it's really important to talk about the problems of climate change, I'm more interested in talking about the solutions, and so I like the way the Transition Network has already embraced that. And it's even moving beyond just talking about problems, but just about how can we make this world a better place. In, in a nutshell, I guess the Transition message at COP21 is it's, this is already happening. You know, Most of the solutions we need are already out there, or a lot of them are, and actually what the politicians need to do is, is get behind them. In issues large like climate change and other challenges we have in the world at the moment. We, we need to engage not only intellectually, but as well emotionally as human beings and change our behaviors. And I, I have this impression that the only way to do that connection is to connect through human interaction. And one of the ways to do that is to tell stories. One of the most amazing things to happen during our eight days in Paris was the launch of the film Demain. From the glittering premiere that we went to at the UGC Normandy cinema with over 1,400 people, to all kinds of other screenings and related events, Demain was an amazing, inspirational celebration of transition and the wider movement of bottom-up solutions. It tells the story of Melanie Laurent and Cyril Dion, who go around the world looking for solutions to the climate crisis. And one of the most amazing things at all those events was how many young people came. And it brought a really powerful dose of inspiration, I think, to those days and gave Transition a profile that we could only really have dreamt of. We're a network of indigenous peoples from Alaska all the way to the United States, frontline communities that are fighting uh, the fossil fuel economy industry. We've got some serious problems. So we're here to, to lift up our voices. And we have friends uh, throughout the world, indigenous peoples here from the global south as well, that's part of our networking. One of the 
mitigation solutions that we're dealing with uh, here at the COP21 as a main solution is the market system. I'm talking about cap and trade, emissions trading, carbon offsets, and specifically the pillar of green economy, the pillar of privatization of nature, and that's RED. R-E-D-D, -D, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. I mean, these countries like Norway are dumping now billions of dollars into pushing a fault solution that is nothing but privatization of nature. Uh, my Tucano community in Northern Kenya has been a, a victim and a witness of climate change. And personally, growing up in my village as a hard boy, taking care of my grandfather's livestock, I saw a beautiful Turkana environment, which was very green, and we could be able to access our pastures and water for our livestock very easily. But 15 years later, if I take you to Turkana County today, you can't find anything green because of climate change. Uh, traditional water sources, which I have always known to exist in my community, to disappear, literally. Yeah, uh, as a pastoralist community which um, engages in nomadism, which involves moving from place to place looking for pastures and water, you can't go around moving looking for water or pastures which are non-existent. I want to see an agreement which will uh, put obligations on the part of developed countries to compensate local communities like those in my community which are being afflicted by climate change, yet they play no or a small role in causing the whole idea of climate change. People talk about sustainable living and it captures in my mind images of zombies. It's the only living thing I know of that's sustainable. Uh, so. Regenerative is a much better term because it says that you're going with the things that nature normally does. We need to stimulate that. We need to be regenerative ourselves and allow those processes to go forward. So this evening we're here um, in Le General, which is a venue in Paris. Um, and we, the Arolas Collective, have been um, creating uh, an experiment, um, it was a game, it was called the UN Canteen. So people arrived with a vegetable and we weighed their vegetables. Depending on the weight of their vegetable, they were assigned a different country. And then they were, they were pulled into smaller tables and asked to collaborate to make a dinner. And throughout the evening there were interventions, so there was a, a massive thunderstorm and a drought that um, meant that some people were taken as uh, climate refugees. Uh, we are trying to also look at uh, different ways of, of acting in the world, different ways of, of doing activism that can have a much more systemic, much more creative uh, ways of engaging people for change. I think being in Paris over this week has really been about real extremes kind of coming into focus and very different worlds sort of sitting alongside each other. So yesterday I went to Grand Palais for the Solutions COP21 event that I was asked to speak at, which was the kind of uh, greenwashing showcase for COP21 in this enormous exhibition centre built for the World Fairs at the turn of the last century, full of Coca-Cola claiming to be part of the solution because 90% of the Coke sold in France is made in France. Uh, hydrogen cars, all of that kind of thing. And uh, uh, all with the most phenomenal police presence I've ever seen. And people being activists and seemingly completely random people and journalists being snatched and, and sort of spirited out of the building in a way that was really deeply intimidating and unpleasant. Today we're here at the Alternatiba village, which is just like the other, the other side where we actually, where we see actual solutions. And, it, and, and what we see walking around here is, is, is people, real people doing stuff, the stuff they're actually doing, and that's really heartwarming to see. The movement Alternatiba, also, beaucoup comme la transition, 
sur du positif, partir des solutions, montrer les solutions, les partager et après pouvoir aborder les problèmes parce qu'on a des solutions dont on peut parler des problèmes. Donc euh, je sors un peu de la transition mais pas trop, c'est souvent les mêmes personnes qui sont dans Alternatiba ou dans la transition. Je pense que la, la COP21 c'est surtout euh, ce qui se passe autour qui est important plus que les négociations. Je pense que on ne va pas avoir de résultats très contraignants pour les gouvernements, pour les entreprises. Ce qui est beaucoup plus important, c'est tous les événements qui sont organisés autour de la COP21. Quand on parle de modèles, on sait qu'on a par exemple Totnes. We have places like Timera and a lot of the eco-village models. We have a lot of the urban farming and gardening models. And one thing that's important to say is that they are replicating. This was my dream. I said, it doesn't matter what else happens at COP21. We must plant a garden together. Someone's talking about biomimicry or permaculture or bioneers or a transition town. I mean, it's all, to me, it's all the same thing. You know, we're all, we all are connecting into a vision of what we know is possible. I think we had a real, uh, a really broad sort of taste of, of what's going on. So I really go away with that sense of there's a whole new generation of young people for whom what we have to say as transition going into those kind of events is, is life-changing stuff, is direction-changing stuff, you know. <laughs> From being a top predator in the life to being a children's entertainer in Paris. <laughs>